Namaskar. A question has been asked regarding the relationship of biology, genetics, and belief. It is a very interesting topic. There is a genetic and biological component to human life and it governs the body-mind reactions to the environment, to one's experience, to one's predisposition to certain uh, fears or moods, emotions. There is a biological component to the body-mind structure. the mental functions of an individual cannot be separated from their physical form. But there is also a, an aspect of human existence that is not governed by biology is not influenced by biology. And does not have its origin in biology. So as Jung would say, there is the small self and there is the larger self. The small self is governed by the biology of the <coughs> form taken and is interwoven with that biology. The larger self is a consciousness and conglomeration of experience that lives outside the body, that it does not require a physical form for its existence. It is, it is composed of the totality of your life experiences of all lives and creates a unique individual not bound by any particular physical form, but that incarnates and expresses through different physical forms. And that self is a conscious being. with greater access to the collective unconscious, to the totality of conscious awareness. In the biological self, their body is a fine-tuned machine with innumerable uh, biochemical processes and organic matters which work together to form an integral operating existence. There is in the human body and mind no distinctive 
separation. I must talk. I'm asking about Lebanon, about this very interesting, about what we were watching. So you cannot separate the reactions of a person from their biology. You know, have you ever seen brothers or sisters, not even biological twins, but just brothers and sisters, and one will laugh just like the other, and they will tell the same jokes in the same manner. They will have the same mannerisms. And you go, how did they get the same mannerisms? And another child from the same family, grown up in the same house, will have different mannerisms. So it cannot be simply attributed to the environment. The mannerisms, the way they laugh, the way they say a certain word, uh, their emotional reactions, are governed by their similar biological uh, programming, which causes a similar reaction. So there is much to human life that is biologically embedded. And even <clears throat> experiences which occur early in the life become biologically embedded. So if a person has a particular trauma in the early life, it becomes biologically encoded and the person's reactions to that trauma become fixed. <clears throat> a pattern develops. It takes on a biological aspect. So experience <clears throat> influences biology and biology influences experience. So when a living being with all of their lifetimes of experience chooses a biological manifestation, a body-mind structure. They do not choose consciously, but by the great laws of the universe, they are brought into harmony with a compatible structure and a compatible situation in which those relationships which are important to them can be played out with the people around them. And so the when the soul enters the body of the baby, there is already a genetic program in that body-mind structure. But it combines with the karmic <clears throat> patterns that dominate the larger personality of the individual, the larger self of the individual that goes from lifetime to lifetime. And there is a reprogramming of the physical structure to meet the needs of the individual. Yet the genetic programs set are also there. So what happens is as the strong karmic impressions in the mind of the larger entity entering the body begin to affect the growing 
fetus. The genetic programs of that fetus are reprinted to work in harmony with the already existing beliefs, mental distortions, needs, and deepest yearnings of the entity embodying in that physical form. So there is a harmonizing between the soul and the body so that the sanskaras of the individual can get expressed. Those latent reactions can find expression in that physical form. And as the baby is born, by that time, this merger is complete. And the consciousness of the larger beingness of the individual is merged into the biology of the body. To say that genetics are fixed is to misunderstand the DNA and the RNA. They are programmable. And when a soul comes in contact with a body, that is when the primary uh, imprint is made and the biology adjusts. But in the life of an individual, as certain circumstances occur that make a big impression in the mind, if you are just dangling your foot and waving it back and forth, there is very little karmic impression. It's, it's, it's not going to affect anything, and it surely will not affect the biology. But if you are in a very terrible car accident, or you are a child and your mother is suddenly killed, and it has a very big emotional impact on you, or a big physical impact from an accident, you will certainly have an impression left, not only in your subtle body, but an impression is left in your physical body. Now you may see the scars of an accident, or you may see the emotional wounds left on a person who has lost loved ones or been through a trauma. But they also impact the RNA and the DNA. And it is modified by that experience. So, if a child grows up in a certain environment where certain beliefs are present, certain ways of doing things, that will affect the mind of the child. It will also affect their chemistry. The chemical networks within the body are fluid, literally. They respond. The body is receptive and responsive. It is a finely engineered tool. It is 
interactive with the environment and responsive. And as karmic impressions are made, they that are significant, they alter the genetics. A person can also choose to live a certain lifestyle, to maintain certain mental or physical habits that will, over time, also alter the genetics. Because the body-mind structure is a fluid, responsive instrument. Adaptive. Not only to the accumulated experiences of the soul entering the body, but adaptive to environmental impressions. Genetics are, were, have been thought to be fixed because they do not adapt easily and often not quickly. So it is not a change that is easily observed, but it does occur. So someone raised in the colds of the Arctic amid the struggles of that world and someone raised on a tropical island will have adaptive genetics to that environment even if they were brought there as a baby rather than genetically part of the already adapted gene pool. Even if the, the person came from the Arctic and was brought as a baby to the island, that person's genetics will quickly start attempting to adapt to the island environment. There are certain biological programs that may be very hard to adapt in a single lifetime, but the children then will be, and the children's children will adapt. So let us say someone comes from the cold and high mountain region and the, the chest is uh, barreled and, uh, for the deep breathing of the thin oxygen on the high mountain. Then the person's uh, moves to the tropical island. It is warm, it is low uh, altitude. At first, actually, they may have some troubles because they are not genetically adapted to the environment. But over time, they will begin to make adaptations and they will become more comfortable in the environment. And then their children will be further adapted and their children's children further adapted. As the body's coding learns what is the best mode of its survival. There are other aspects in the genetic coding that are much more fluid than perhaps the diameter of the chest of a person. These are mental tendencies. 
So let us say that due to past karma and the incarnation in a certain gene pool and family tradition, one has a tendency to anxiety. It is known that relatives have had this tendency. And to reinforce it, some childhood experiences have happened which have brought forward that fearfulness. So the person grows up and they are a bit fearful. And in fact, this trait becomes genetically encoded. It becomes part of who they are. And it is not so easily changed. The person can't just become aware that they have this pattern and then they just change it. No, it is not like that. Not if it, it can be like that if the pattern is not deeply established. But if it is deeply established, it becomes genetically encoded. So let us say for the example, the person has lost their parent in their childhood. It becomes genetically encoded a certain fear or uh, assumption. The child losing the parent loses all trust that those they love will remain with them. They become afraid of losing those they love. There are many experiences that impact the mind and there is a reaction in the mind. But then that reaction becomes a habit of reaction. And if the experience is deeply traumatic, loss of a loved one, a deeply frightening experience uh, where one feels one's life is threatened, these, a traumatic experience will create a very deep impression in the mind. And so then that deep impression tends to adjust the biology, the types of chemicals secreted in the body, and the actual genetic coding becomes impacted. But unlike the size of the chest, it is not as fixed in the physical structure. It is fixed in the mental structure. So the person who has lost the loved one in the childhood will grow up and they will find that their attitudes towards uh, loss are different from the attitudes of the pe person who has not had this type of early loss. If a person has experienced a deep trauma a part of a war and seeing people shot all around and killed and thought that they would be shot, their attitude will be changed. They will never have the same approach to life. It becomes deeply uh, felt and affects the biology. So when that is true, to simply do therapy and hope that the person can work it out in their mind is very often unsuccessful because the person does not have the capacity to do that. They are a 
at that point, biologically, genetically encoded to the responses. But these are soft encodings. They are easier to change because they are mental encodings rather than physical encodings in the body. So they change faster. So if a person goes through an intensive program to recode the body, it is possible to do so. And the greatest recoding comes from meditation. Because what has imprinted in the body is a sanskara, a mental reaction to an experience. This reaction becomes held in the subconscious mind and reflected in the biology of the body. When Brahma Sadhana is done, the mind is suspended in the quietude and silence. When the mind becomes suspended, these sanskaric patterns rise to the surface and get played out in the life, as you all know. When this happens, there is the opportunity for change. These sanskaric patterns can be altered. But what does it mean to alter them? So let us say the person has been through a very, very deep trauma, either in this life or in a past life. And the impression of that trauma is deep in the psyche of the person and reflected in the body mind they are uh, the body they are inhabiting in the genetic coding it gets reflected because it is adaptive to the sanskaras of the individual so can the person then suddenly be as if they have had no deeply traumatic experience, as if it never occurred, and the whole thing is erased, and the reaction to that experience is erased? Probably not. That is unrealistic. For, in fact, it did occur. If you have seen some truth with your own eyes, can you imagine that it didn't happen and pretend it didn't happen? You become a hypocrite, always trying to run away from what you've seen. Rather, what can occur is that the individual changes their relationship to their experience. And the experience ceases to have the influence over them because they have altered their relationship to it. So, let us say the individual has had a terrible trauma in their life. <clears throat> they have been in a war zone and they have seen so many people brutally killed in the most ugly fashion and they have felt that they would die also but by some miracle they survived. But this trauma has affected their mind and it affected their genetics, it deeply influenced. What to do? 
it can never be undone that consciousness has witnessed such horror. The questions that arise from that, the disappointment in human beings, can never be undone. But what can change is one's relationship to the experience. And this is where the adaptation, both mentally and biologically, occurs. one can begin to accept the spectrum of human experience. One can develop compassion for all the living beings who suffer, for all the living beings who cause suffering, and for one's own condition. One can begin to stop judging, stop thinking that wishing to be someone else with some other experiences, to learn self-love and self-acceptance, compassion and loving-kindness. These difficult experiences that happen in the lives of people are challenges to the soul. They are challenges to connect deeper in love. To find love that transcends the horrors, the pain, the sorrow and the fear. And as you do this, your biology is changed. You don't erase what you have experienced and the pain of it. But you learn a love that is so deep and so compassionate, so connected to your larger self, that it all becomes okay. you become at peace. The strain of your fight with the experience you had goes away. And as you learn to accept, love, and have compassion for, the pain within you you begin to have that for all people. These are opportunities in life to deepen into association with your transcendent self, your larger self, rather than simply the body-mind structure. And as you do that, that body-mind in its adaptivity adapts more to the transcendent self and begins to alter itself even genetically, chemically and genetically. Because the very nature of the body-mind in order to house a soul and the karmic patterning of that soul must be from the get-go adaptive.
Consciousness governs matter, not matter consciousness. Beliefs are not made by genetics. They are made by consciousness and reflected in genetics. The body is a fine-tuned machine, a high-end computer, a chemical, organic life force that is adaptive to beings and consciousness. And what you carry with you from your past, your collective past of so many births, gets reflected, imprinted, into the genetic coding, melded with the biology, so two children may laugh alike, they may react alike, because their biology is similar genetically. But they will not be the same, because the karmic patterning that has imprinted on that body-mind structure, on each body-mind structure, will be different. So though they laugh alike, have the same mannerisms, one may become a great politician and leader of people, and another may just be a simple carpenter. Their karmic patterns of their larger self that goes from life to life will determine how that genetic process interfaces and where it takes them. One child comes into an alcoholic family and they become completely emotionally disturbed. Another child comes into the same alcoholic family and they find resilience inside themselves. They engage in adaptive behaviors and they find become high-functioning individuals who have productive lives. So you say, what is the role of genetics? It is very strong, but genetics is not built only on the biological uh, inheritance from the parent. That is melded with the sanskaras, the karmic patterning brought by the soul that comes into that body. And people choose different situations for different reasons. The one child deeply impacted and uh, mentally distressed by the alcoholic family may have had patterns in the past that needed to get expression in that situation. And come to the surface, and so they chose it. The other child may have chosen that body. They may have been brought to that situation for a different reason. Perhaps they have had a karmic past with one of those parents and owed them a debt 
to try to help them in some way. And they would come to that situation to settle that debt. But they are not there to be destroyed by the situation. They are there for a different reason. So when their karmic patterns join the biology, there is a different level of adaptive skill. You see? Is this clarifying? Do you have questions? I have one question. Yeah, let's say, say that one man has been in war, war time, uh, let's say, yeah, a couple of years, and then he gets married, he, he, he gets children, so would, would the children, their gene, gene pattern, get something from that? So you are saying the person was in a war and they are deeply influenced. They have a post-traumatic stress. Will the children be impacted by the post-traumatic stress of the parent? Not really that uh, what they experience at all, but I mean biologically, are there, uh, could the children have in their genes uh, something from the experiences of that? If it is a one-time experience, it is unlikely, or the effect will be very minimal. Because remember, for the child, also that soul is coming in and adapting the body. And it is unlikely to make an impression. But if the experience is such, is of a type that will require adaptation to an environment, it is likely to influence the adaptive environmental processes of the offspring. So, if a person moves from a very cold climate to a very hot climate, slowly over the generations, there will be more pigmentation in the skin. But before something as physical as pigmentation occurs, there will be an adaptive features in more subtle ways to that environment. So there is this altering of the genetics that occurs in adaptation to the new environment and will continue to occur. If the person has had a deep trauma and their mind has been affected. That tendency, the impact will will come to the child. Whether you say it's from environment or from genetics, there is some carryover to the child. So family lineages have certain commonalities of predisposition. But it is not so black and white. It is not so... it is subtle. And may vary greatly depending upon the karmic influences of the soul entering the body. I'm thinking the whole generation as, as my, my father's who went to war, who had to, went, uh, who gone through two wars, so if that left some kind of impression uh, in the genes of this 
my generation and, and children of, of my generation. It has Im definitely left impressions and reactions. Whether you want to call them physical or mental, there are reactions. Because you have grown up with the results, faced with the karmic results in those individuals who went through that war, you have grown up with that karmic results. It's a part of your experience in your life. How you adapt to it is from your overall karmic perspective. But it has been something in your environment which you indeed must adapt to one way or another. But that it has affected your genet genetics, I think, is not so prominent. Years and years, generation upon generation, of war-torn experience will impact genetics. nation has had so many wars during the history that I think it must have <laughs> quite an So what happens in the biology of a person is their aggressive tendencies will be honed, will become more to ensure their survival in a hostile environment. The parts of the brain which will govern that hostile reaction will be more easily triggered because the person has grown up in a hostile environment. And after, if this happens generation upon generation, it will leave a genetic imprint. the people will become more warlike, more aggressive. It is what they know. It is their way. Until someone incarnates with a different flow and that influences the whole structure and they change the pattern. not to become more like aggressive is to, to become oppressed, suppressed. Precisely. And so would you rather be oppressed or would you rather be the aggressor? Naturally, the adaptive function makes the people more warlike. In this way, genetics are influenced, temperaments are influenced. Values can be influenced. But remember, the fine-tuned machine of the human body in its early before birth, in early stages of development, is encoded by the being coming into it, adaptively adjusts. And so sometimes you see someone of an entirely different nature, born of the same parents, in the same genetics, in the entire reinforced culture of a certain flow, they will be entirely different because the soul has come there for a different reason and it is a different 
type of person than the type normally drawn to that setting. They may be there to change the pattern. So you will see in a very peaceful culture a very warlike individual arise. And you will see in a very warlike culture a person of peace and equanimity, a leader of compassion and integration arise and change the entire coding of the collective mind of that culture of people. For you must realize there is not only the individual circumstances creating the encoding, but the collective. All right. Is there more? All right. Thank you, Mama. All right. Namaskar.